Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we're going to be going through Bernie's official campaign website. And specifically, we will be discussing our possibly or perhaps most likely Democratic candidate for president, Bernie Sanders' view on climate change and the Green New Deal. If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. Alrighty then. Alright, we've got... Bernie Sanders 2020 website here, and specifically, we're going to be taking a look at his thoughts on climate change and the Green New Deal. Expect a lot of these types of videos in the future. I plan to do a deep dive on all of Bernie's beliefs, because as, as I said in the intro, he is most likely going to be our Democratic candidate, so I believe that it is entirely fair of me. Uh, as someone who is critical of him, to go through his entire website. And the thing you cannot say about Bernie is that he is not thorough. Warren recently criticized Amy Klobuchar's website for having, uh, she said it was two paragraphs uh, about, I, I can't even remember the topic, I think it was healthcare, but she, she criticized her website for being short. And whether or not that's true, you can't criticize Bernie for this. Because I clicked on one thing, which was climate change, and and it is truly astonishing the detail that he goes into. It's so much so that I would expect no one to actually go through the whole thing. And fair enough to him, fair enough to him, he puts his key points. As you can see, he puts his key points right here. So it's like, look, you don't have time to go through it? Bam, here you go. Here's my key points. However... It is my job to do that for you. <laughs> so I will be going through this. Not tonight, but in, in in the future, I can promise you I'm going to be doing a deep dive on all of Bernie's policies so I know them intimately and I can critique them fairly. With that being said, we're going to start with just a single portion, just a single portion of this. Again, we will be discussing now his views on the Green New Deal, um, but it's more, the section is, is, is the Green New Deal, but it's more about climate change than the Green New Deal. For those of you who don't know, the Green New Deal was proposed by a representative from New York City, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, known colloquially as AOC, and who shall be from here on out known as AOC. Uh, she proposed this as a, it, it was very clever, very good political move, something actually that I would do, that she connected history to this plan. So she takes your plan and she compares it to history. As you know, the Green New Deal, or as you may or may not know, I should say, the Green New Deal was President Roosevelt's response to the Great Depression. So he says, look, we got we need a new strategy in order to combat this entirely new situation. Which again is something I would do. And whether or not you think the New Deal itself worked, um, I have heard arguments that it actually prolonged the Great Depression. But whether or not that's true, this is again this is a tactic that I would use. I would I mean, obviously, I like <laughs> I like to believe I would say something that's true, but beside the point, I would certainly be using American history to connect uh, voters to. So I think this is a very good move politically. That being said, it seems Bernie does not want to entirely tie himself to this because, as I said, he doesn't necessarily he doesn't really mention it a lot. He he talks more about climate change and I think that is also deliberate because there are many a flaw in the Green New Deal to say 
the least. So uh, let's begin by going through this. Firstly, <clears throat> reaching, these are his main points. Reaching 100% renewable energy for electricity and transportation by no later, no later than 2030 and complete decarbonization of the economy by 2050 at the latest. An important note, at the latest 2050 and electricity and transportation by 2030. I did a video earlier. I said Bernie was not advocating for this. I was wrong. I was wrong. Transportation by 2030. So he does. If you have a gas-powered car, that is gone by 2030. Less than 10 years now. Your gas-powered car is gone. I don't think anyone can accuse me of being hyperbolic. <laughs> 2030, your gas-powered car is gone. Or maybe not gone. But you can't drive it. You can't turn it on because that would obviously uh, produce emissions. So, yeah, you, you can keep your collector's car from the 1950s. You just can't turn it on. Ending unemployment by creating 20 million jobs. This is amazing. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Needed ending unemployment by creating 20 million jobs needed to solve the climate crisis this this is a fantasy this is a, this is a fantasy 100% because look this is what this is what i don't like about modern politics on either side because they all claim they all claim to have the magic bullet they all claim to have the silver bullet do you know what here's what we're going to do we're going to solve unemployment and climate change in one solution, one easy solution. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to end unemployment by giving everyone who doesn't have a job a job at solving climate change. It's like, oh my God, why? I can't believe no one thought of that. Wow. Great job. No. It's nonsense. This is, and, and my problem, as I was saying, there are no magic bullets. There's no magic solution. Every one of these things is extraordinarily complicated. Like, I sit here and I think to myself, do you know what I'm going to do? Do you know what I'm going to do? This is actually good. This is a really good example. I'm going to give, I'm going to go on Bernie's website. I'm going to see what he thinks about climate change. And I'm going to do a video on that. Lo and behold, it's it's, it's it's extraordinarily long. It's incredibly long, all of his views on climate change. And as I said, credit to him for that. He's not leaving anything out. Credit to him. If you want to know his views on something, there it is. He's not hiding. I just think he's wrong. He's just not, he's not hiding it. Credit to him. But to say that there's a magic, oh, here, everybody who's unemployed, we'll just give you a job to fix fixing climate change. That's what it is. It's like, dude, you've got 10,000 words here alone about it. And and your solution is that simple? Really? Really? No, nobody's solution is that simple to anything. Any problem in our modern life is not that simple. Otherwise, we would have done it. And and this, this kind of would go against myself. Look, I think politicians are self-serving. I, I don't think, I think they're rarely honest. Rarely honest. But I also don't think most of them are stupid. If there was an idea like this, it's like, look, look, if let's solve climate change by just ending unemployment. Who who would not do that? What's the argument against that? There isn't one. There there isn't one. And you might say you might say, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why you should vote for Bernie. No. Think about it for two seconds. Why have we not already done this? It's so obvious. Why w The reason we haven't already done this is because it's not that simple and this easy solution does not exist. That's why we haven't done it. All right. Uh, making <clears throat> directly invest. And, Bernie, this is A. Directly in invest 
ahistoric 16.3 trillion public investment. Look, I'm the last person to criticize anyone for grammar, but one would think that in your highlighted section, in your in bold section, you could have somebody read over it maybe once. Directly invest a historic 16.3 trillion public investment. And here's where we get into it. Uh, toward these efforts, in line with the mobilization of resources made during the New Deal and World War II, but with an ex explicit choice to include indigenous and other minority communities who are systematically excluded in the past. This is not true. That's just not true. First of all, there's two things everybody should know about this this statement. Firstly, there was no choice by implying that we're systematically including in quote black, indigenous, and other minority communities, unquote. By implying we're including them, you're implying we excluded them in the past, which is just not true. Yeah. You're not going to catch me saying that 1940s America was this paragon of racial justice. It's obviously false. Obviously not true. But we needed every body we could get, either on the front line or in the factory. So we had no... There was no excluding black people from factories in the 1940s. It, we needed everybody, as I had said. So that is just patently false. And not only that, here's something that British people would love to remind the American public. It is that Britain, it was Britain's roughly $5 billion, and again, this is 1940 currency, $5 billion in arms purchases that lifted the United States out of the Great Depression permanently. And as Anthony Beaver says, primed its wartime economic boom i believe it's the quote that is the quote so saying so now we're just what i'm trying to say is in 1940 someone else gave us the money <laughs> to invest someone else gave us the money to invest in our wartime economy at least initially but now we're, we're just paying with for it ourselves so it, it's a totally miscon misconstrued historical argument it 100 percent is a just transition for workers a just transition for workers. further furthermore furthermore this 16.3 trillion keep that in, keep that number in mind that's not even counting his health care plan everyone has been talking about bernie's health care plan that's not even counting it. So, a just transition for workers. I, I believe I believe Bernie would try to do this. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to do a, to a just transition for workers. Because what, what do you do? This is my whole thing. Bernie Sanders is, I'm a democratic socialist. Well, to do these plans, you would need not to be. You would need to not be. You would need to be an authoritarian socialist in order to do these plans. But he doesn't mention that. He doesn't like to mention that. Declaring climate change a national emergency. In, in what way is it a national emergency? And by that I mean, I'm not going to get into any, the climate science because, surprise, surprise, I don't really know it. But what you can't say is that it is an emergency it's not just look at how people are reacting to this coronavirus that's an emergency and and yes it has yet as of thursday night february 27th it is not yet an american national emergency but just see how nations react when they actually believe something is an emergency and maybe you think it should be an emergency but I just think that the comparison is valid. That if this was a actual national emergency, things would be shut down. 
really, if something came out that it was like, hey, the world actually is going to end in 12 years, I think coal plants would shut down in one day. One day. Let's be, say, like, look, we can't destroy the whole economy, just like with the coronavirus. We can't destroy the whole economy because that would that would bring about the apocalypse just as surely as climate change fear-mongering or disasterism would be a better word. Climate change disasterism or a massive plague outbreak would. So, so we can't just shut down the whole economy, but we can't shut down all the coal plants. That would be step one. That would be step one. Maybe you think we should. I don't. I don't. But it's not an emergency. It's not. It's just hyperbole to get people scared to vote for you. Saving American families money. This is just a joke. I'm not. 16.3 trillion. And you're going to save American. Right, right, it, right here. 16.3 trillion public investment. And, and then you come down. What is that? Two paragraphs later? Two. And you're going to save American families money. Sure you are. Okay. Here's the last point I want to make. Here's the last two paragraphs I'm going to go to. Commit to reducing emissions throughout the world. And then meeting and exceeding our fair share of global emissions reductions. In what way? Is this a benefit to the American people? In what way? I do not believe that it is. And I think it's fairly clear that it is not a benefit to the American people. The argument is perhaps not, but it's a benefit to the rest of the world. To which my response would be, why do I care? I, I don't live in the rest of the world. And perhaps you think that's callous. I don't care. I, I don't care about the effects of emissions in a country I've never been to. I just don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I do not care. I don't care. What? So my neighbor gets laid off because you want to give somebody else in another country a better life and maybe you think that's the right thing to do maybe there is a moral argument to be made there but guess what I don't care I, I just don't care I don't care I'd rather see my either myself I shouldn't exclude my, myself or my neighbor with a job so he can feed his wife and his kids than some person in some country I've never been to and I've never met could have a better life I'm sorry, I don't care. And my last point, commit to reducing emissions throughout the world. How far are you willing to go? Which brings me back to also the national emergency thing. If this really is a national emergency, if humanity really was going to be extinguished in 12 years as AOC has said why would you not go to war with other countries to stop them from burning fossil fuels there's no there there is no logic to not doing that so if you think the world's gonna end and let's say China or India says look we don't believe we don't believe your climate science we're going to keep building coal-fired power plants, as both countries have been doing, by the way. There's no logic to not, like, well, all right, you refused? Guess what? We're going to bomb your coal-fired power plants. Is that really what you want? You really want to start World War III for climate change, seriously. Because th that's your logic. That's why I don't think you really believe it. Because I don't think you would say, I don't think there's any person who would say, yeah, I, I, I do want to start World War III for climate change. No, I don't think you really believe that. I really don't think you do. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst. I'm going to leave it there for tonight. 
If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube, and be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.